Hey, Jason Rogers here, and I quickly wanted to articulate for you some of the key differences between an advisory board versus a board of directors. Which one is better for you and your business? Let's talk about it real quickly here. So firstly, an advisory board simply gives advice. They advise you as the founder and CEO, or they advise your executive leadership team. That could be your COO or your CMO or your CTO or your, your CEO, which may be you. An advisory board gives you advice but ultimately they aren't liable based on the advice they give you because it's just advice for you to do with it as you will. A board of directors on the other hand, they give advice and they have to go through a much more stringent process in giving that advice and ultimately the advice they give can carry ramifications associated with it. See, a board of directors in a more traditional format, think of a board of directors like in a publicly traded company, which is a side note, you need to have a board of directors to go public. A board of directors in the more formal sense, they have true voting powers and the advice they give is expected to be acted upon by the company whose advice they received from the board and therefore there are ramifications for each board member to give that advice. So what generally that means is an advisory board member can kind of just give you advice like crazy. Not that they're gonna be foolish or rash with their advice giving, but there's no ramifications for their advice because ultimately it's just advice for you to take action upon. But a true board of directors, an individual who's on a true board of directors, the advice he or she is giving has weight. There are fiduciary responsibilities that a true member of a board has to con has to follow. There are rules. It is a much more buttoned up process, if you will. Some of the benefits of a board of directors, one is it gives more credibility to your company, especially in the eyes of investors. So if you're in a business that is doing acquisitions, making acquisitions, and those acquisitions are capital intensive, maybe because you're buying businesses at six or seven or eight or nine or 10 times earnings, and you're gonna need capital, you're gonna need to fundraise, then having a legitimate board of directors is going to add credibility to your enterprise. And the reason for that is simply because there are multiple decision makers. There's a checks and balances system that's in play with the board of directors because each individual on a true board of directors has voting powers. Whereas an advisory board, again, does not have voting powers because again, they're simply giving you advice. Now, of course, one of the pros of an advisory board is as the founder or the CEO of your company, not giving away voting power obviously means you maintain more voting power pretty obvious, pretty self-explanatory. And so that's preferable for you in, in many instances, but if you're looking to fundraise capital and or if you're ultimately looking to go public, then you want to look into forming a more legitimate board of directors. Now it's gonna be a more costly and time-consuming process to have a legitimate board of directors, as you can imagine, right? If you're a board member for Pepsi, it's obviously gonna be very different than if you're an advisory in, a, in an advisory board position in a startup, right? Because in an advisory position, again, you're simply giving advice. Whereas if you're a board member for Pepsi, you have fiduciary responsibilities, you must conduct yourself in a certain way, and the advice you give, the things you state, and ultimately the, the opinions that you give, they hold weight. And those votes that you cast, they hold weight. If, if a true board member casts a vote, and that vote ultimately leads to the bankruptcy of the company, there could be some ramifications for a true board member. Now, this is why in many cases, if you're looking to build a board of directors, a legitimate board of directors, not an advisory board, but if you're looking to build a true board of directors, then those board of directors may be looking for DNO insurance, directors and officers insurance, because again, they want to be avoiding that potential liability. Of course, as well, the legal entity that they are operating under will largely shield them of that liability, whether that's an LLC or a C Corp, what have you, albeit there are ways in which at times, the corporate veil can be pierced and liabilities can still get to the individuals. But that's another topic. Anyways, so, so those are some of the key differences between an advisory board versus a board of directors. Again, if you're able to mainly leverage commercial debt and you don't need to fundraise capital and or if you don't want to go public, I would probably suggest an advisory board because then they could just freely give you ideas and you can maintain all of your voting powers. But if you're looking to fundraise capital in the form of equity, I'm not talking about debt. I'm talking about fundraising investor capital and or if you're trying to go public and or if you want to build even more credibility for your team, then a true board of directors is the more tried and true established form of a board that will give you more respect and credibility with investors and if you ever wanted to go public.